Hello, today I'm going to teach you how to make this beautiful infinity ring. It's actually quite simple. And here are some of the things you will need. All right, I'm gonna start out by straightening my wire. Like I said, these um, wire straighteners are helpful, but they're abs not absolutely necessary. If you don't have a wire straightener, you can pretty much do it with your hand. All right, now I'm going to begin forming this ring. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your wire and your bail making pliers and leave about three or four inches of wire and Put it in between the bail making pliers or if you're using the needle nose pliers put them in between there then you're going to wrap it like this and pull the wires so that you have that nice loop shape pull it on the bail making pliers easier shown than said but this is a this is what you want it to look like very simple so far. You with me so far? All right, pretty simple like I said. All right, now what you're gonna, okay, and this is important, how you cross it has a big influence on how your ring is gonna turn out. I learned this after making, uh, I don't know, 30 rings? <laughs> so um, it's, it's very specific on how you need to do this. If you don't do it like this, it's not gonna turn out like the one you saw before at the beginning of the video. So you want this top wire to cross over that bottom wire. See, here's the rest of my wire. Have it go around and cross over. You see it's coming over. Okay, so now you're gonna get your pliers and put it underneath that wire and put it as, as close to possible as that to that um to that circle and then wrap it over it like this okay so so far I have that circle you see that it's going over and then loops okay now you're gonna situate it like this sorry this one is in the way all right so you see it like that. Okay, now you're gonna put this wire through that hole, not up, th not through the bottom, not, not through here like that. You want it to go in through the hole like that. Let me give you a better look because it's really important how you do it. So you make that loop, you go over and make another loop, and then you're gonna go, you see this wire right here? This is gonna be going over. You're gonna have one wire on one side going over and one wire on the other side going under. Before I continue, let me show you a little bit of what I mean. Here's two different wires, uh, rings. One was made with the thicker wire that I'm using now and the other one with a thinner wire. So that's the difference. And if you see on this one right here, the smaller one, both of the side wires are over that bottom loop. That ring wasn't made right, but it still looks pretty good. But if you look on the other one right here, I like that one better. You may like this one better, but I, this is the way I'm teaching you. So you see one wire has got to go under the loop on one side and over the loop on the other side. So it's important how you put that wire through. Now let's continue. Okay, so as we continue, you can see we've got the two, uh, two loops for the basic foundation of this ring. So you can see this wire right here. This is the one that's going over. This one needs to be the one going under. So to do that, you're gonna stick it through the top, through, in through there, like this. See, so move that one out of the way. You can reshape it afterwards more. You could tell this one is going over, so okay, let's do this. If you were to heat up this metal prior to using it, it will make this job a lot easier. Unfortunately, I didn't do that. So you're gonna bend your wire, and you're gonna stick it through there. See, through it. This one's going out, this one's going in. Sorry if I seem redundant, but this is a mistake 
I didn't learn until 30 rings later and I don't want that to happen to you. So you're gonna pull it through. Stick it through, pull it through. You see it's gonna be a little deformed like this, but that's okay, you're gonna fix it. So to fix it, what you need to do is get more of this wire out through that loop. You just gotta work with it. Another thing you could do is get the pliers that you were working with, stick them through the wire again, and just grab onto it and make a rotating. You see my right hand is rotating like this. And then grab that other wire and pull out. And then pull, now, um, that was a little too much. So you're gonna stick your needle nose pliers or your bail making pliers back in there to recreate that root loop because I had pulled it too much. And you're gonna do that rotation again. It's, it's a lot easier to do this when I'm not on camera. All right, now I, I've got the basic uh, shape. You can always work with that with your tools and make it better, but <laughs> you get the idea. It's not hard, but it's just hard to do on camera, but you, you get how to do it. You see this ring right here? You see how these wires that are coming through on the side to create the band? You see how it has that little arch? That's an important design part of the ring, and to get that, this is what you're gonna do. With this wire that's coming out here, you're gonna pull down. What's happening when you pull it down is that this little loop right here, when you pull it down, it's pushing against this one, so it's helping you create that arch. So you're gonna pull it down, and then you're gonna pull it back up a little bit, and there you go, there's your arch. And then you're gonna do the same thing with this one, pull it up a little bit, pull it back down, and there's your arch. Now all, all you have to do to get the shape is um, just put your bail making pliers back in there and um, just work with it until you get the shape. When you're working with bail making pliers like these wubbers that I have, um, it can be hard to stick that back through there. So if you have a pair of needle nose pliers, it will really help because you can stick the small one in there and it can, it can help you make the shape again if you can't get the other ones in there. So I'll go ahead and shape this correctly and then we'll continue. Okay, here you go. You, you see I shaped it pretty well. It's pretty easy to do this as long as you crisscross them right. Now I really highly recommend practicing with some copper wire first. No matter how easy this may look to you, practice always makes perfect so please don't waste your silver wire practicing this for the first time because you're bound to make mistakes practice with some practice wire first and if you don't have practice wire wait until you get some <laughs> all right now what you're going to do is you're going to get your ring mandrel oh gosh i think i'm gonna have to switch lenses you're gonna wrap your you want it to be two sizes smaller than what you want the finished product to be. So I'm gonna start it at a size four. I'm gonna go for a size six. Maybe small. start even smaller, because later on you can always increase the size pretty easily. So maybe even start three sizes smaller would be a good idea. So you're gonna wrap your wire around that mandrel. Sorry about the background noise, but unfortunately my snowball microphone doesn't work so well on my computer. So I have to get a new computer to be able to do good narration. <laughs> Otherwise I'm just using the microphone on my camera. So I'll show you once I have that wrapped around. All right, now as you can see here, I have wrapped it around my mandrel and now I'm going to cut it. Um, remember, have it about three, two or three sizes smaller than what you want the finished product to be. So um, try to have it, it's not easy to do on camera again, but have it tightly wrapped around and then you're going to get your cutters. You might have a little extra wire hanging off, it depends on how much you started with, but it's always a, better to have more than not enough. And then you're going to cut it, whoop, <laughs> alright there we go. So it's cut now. So here we go, this is what we have. All right, 
Now for the next part. Okay, for this next part, you need to make these two cut pieces of wire flush on this end right here so that you can um, put them together without gaps and solder the band together. So you're going to need a file, but if you don't have a file, you can always use a nail file. I have a file, so I'm going to do that and we'll continue. Once you've filed uh, each side flush, you want to push them so that they're past each other and then pull them back and then put them together. Make sure that they're flush together so that you don't have any gaps when soldering because solder will not fill gaps and you want to make sure that you make a quality ring. So if you feel like you still have gaps or uh, your, your ends are not fitting flush together like they should, then that probably means you didn't file right or you filed it at an angle. So go back in and file again. This could even happen with a miter cutting device that you file it at an angle and instead of straight, you kind of like this. So go back in and file some more until they're fitting together very snugly like that. Okay, once you're done soldering your ring, it's going to look very dark like this. That is called fire scale, and it's actually very simple to remove. You can buy chemicals to remove it, but I don't like to work with chemicals too much because of cancer and all that. So, a natural way to do it is in one of the videos I did. Click here now to see the video on how to remove fire scale. Okay, so for this infinity ring, once you have um, your loop, your infinity knot shaped the way you want it, uh, you want to get the band straight. So to do that, you're going to put your ring on your ring mandrel. Actually, before you get it straight, you're going to want to put it on your ring mandrel. I'm actually working with a ring that I had already done before because the other one is uh, in the solution to remove the fire skull right now. But... So what you're going to do is you're going to create your band. Hammer around the band, like starting from one side going to the next side. I'm not doing it very well here because I'm just trying to give you an idea of what to do. But you do that and then you do that once and not too hard because what you're doing is when you're doing that you're also increasing the size. So when you're hammering it pay attention as it will get bigger and don't hammer it too too soft but also not not too light and then you're gonna and this is important otherwise you'll get a cone shaped band which you don't want gonna remove the ring flip it over and put it back on and continue hammering from one side all the way until you get to the other side once you've reached the size that you're comfortable with you're gonna take off your ring and you're going to notice that it's not quite sitting right. The band may be a little twisted and whatnot. So for this, you need a stainless steel block, which I totally have, but I cannot find. So if you don't have a metal block, like I have, but I cannot find, then you can use a piece of wood, of wood with a straight edge. Or if you have a miter cutting vise, you could actually use that metal and, um, use the flat side and put your band like this which I could totally do that but I'm going to show you with the wood so you're going to push that um, ring down and hold it like that and then you're going to hammer the, the band down like this what that is doing is creating an even band so it's not wobbly but it's straight and you're going to do that on each side. Once you're done, I'm not really showing you. I'm not doing it fully. I'm just showing you how to do it. But once you uh, are pretty good the way with the way that it looks on one side, I flipped it over and you can see it's still not flat. So you're going to flip it over, continue hammering it until you have a, a straight band. And hold that there so it doesn't move. Uh, again, if you have a piece of metal that has a flat edge, it would be better to do it on there. 
Once you've done that and you're happy with the, the way that the knot looks, which you can manipulate with the tools, and you're happy with the way the band is, and you're happy with the size, then you begin to polish it. To learn how to polish, click this video right here. This one's already polished. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please share this on my Facebook. Please share this on Facebook, MySpace, Twitter, 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 Pinterest, or whatever else. Thumbs up the video if you like it. Thumbs down if you didn't. If you have any questions, comment below. And check out my other videos too. Bye. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't leave now. You gotta click on one of these links at the bottom to watch those videos. And please subscribe so you can watch more great videos from my channel. Thanks. Have a blessed day. Bye.